Hey everybody, this is John for Pioneer Nexus MTG coming at you with another deck top five decks for the Pioneer format going into November of 2023. This time starting out with Rakdos Midrange. This is a deck that has kind of waned and waxed over the last couple of months. Um, it's had a rather strong comeback the last couple of months, and now it is probably the number one most played deck in the format again. Uh, this deck has not really gotten too many new tools of late. Um, it's the same old Reckoner Bank Buster into Fable of the Mirror Breaker into Shieldred, backed up by removal spells, Thought Seize, Fatal Push, a uh, myriad of two mana removal spells, Blood Tithe Harvester, basically all the good red and black cards. No true synergies between them, but still very powerful overall, all kind of tied together by Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, the new cards that the deck has seen a little bit of is The End which is kind of a pseudo extraction effect that exiles target, ar yeah, target artifact, target planeswalker or creature, and then removes all those copies from your opponent's deck. Um, you can hit at your opponent's Teferi Hero Dominaria, you can hit your opposing Shoulderids, you can hit, you know, uh, Cavalier of Thorns, you know, Karn the Great Creator, and just remove them all at one shot. Very expensive for that, but still four mana, remove your most, opponent's most annoying threat is pretty solid overall. And the other addition is some of the versions are splitting Shouldered and Arc Fiend of the Dross. This is the 6-6 flyer that was part of a combo with, I believe, Metallurgic... Um, I forget what the name of the card was. But it was a combo piece for a time. And then people just realized that it's a fairly decent utility creature. It's a 6-6 flyer that you basically have three turns to kill your, well, your opponent attacking. Plus, every time one of their creatures die, they lose two life. So... Uh, definitely helps to close out the games in a lot of situations, and it's just a big beefy boy in the meantime. Uh, the sideboards, they have a myriad of mixture of different cards, you know, the duress and go blank effects to supplement the thought seizes against the control and combo decks. You have additional sweepers like Extinction Event and Hinsugu Consumes All against the creature decks, and then just some utility cards like Rack or Bank Buster for the grindy mid range and control matchups. Pithing Needle to shut down annoying permanents like Planeswalkers or things like Thespian Stage. And this has been the number one deck in the format for the last couple months, so no terrible surprise there. Number two is Arclight Phoenix. Now there has been some attempts to iterate on Arclight Phoenix. Uh, that new uh, rogue that mills an uh, instant or sorcery or rogue to your hand for the adventure part. Um, has seen some play in some lists, but this is kind of the stock version of it. And that is the four shredder, four arclight phoenix. Sometimes you'll see a copy of the or two of thing in the ice in the main deck. Um, basically, this is the blue red mid range deck of the format, much like it was when it was in the modern format. Um, you have a bunch of new can bunch of cantrips, including the new one sleight of hand from Wilds of Aldrain. Um, beyond that, you know, nothing really much has changed. You have your red-based removal for the early game. You have this pieces of the puzzle to kind of fill your graveyard with Arclight Phoenixes for your delve spells. And then you kind of have this combo finish of Galvanic Iteration, Temporal Trespass, and then hope to swing for a lot of damage with either Leisure Shredders or Arclight Phoenixes. Uh, the deck has been on a little bit of an uptick when kind of has leveled out now. Um, I think part of it is just there's no real true innovation in the Pioneer format right now, with the focus being on Modern for the RCQ season. Um, a lot of people have kind of moved away from the format, as there's no true high-stakes Pioneer format for, for uh, tournaments right now, other than challenges and a few other uh, events. But mainly, Modern's kind of the big eternal focus right now. But this is certainly a fairly stock, fairly reasonable deck. It tends to be fairly good against the aggressive decks. Can outgrind the control decks a little bit, um, but it is vulnerable to who... Uh, graveyard hate in the post board games, so you'll often see things like Crackling Drake or Sahili to kind of tie things over, and a little bit soft to mono green, though Thing in the Ice and Ledger Shredder, as well as the combo finish, does help in that matchup. Speaking of mono green, I think this is a deck that has slipped a little bit in terms of its representation. I think that is in part because there's no true emphasis on winning in the format right now, with obviously no big events going on right now. Um, but I still think this deck is very powerful and is probably one of the top two overall power decks in the format, even if performance-wise it hasn't been doing all that much. Uh, there's been a couple of cards spoiled for the new set coming out here in a month or so that could potentially add to Karn's Wishboard, including there's, I forget the name of the card, but there's a six mana uh, enchantment or artifact 
that says your spells can't be countered and then during your end step you basically do the equivalent of cascade for five uh, you flip over cards from the top of your library until you hit a null land permanent um, five mana or less plays quite nicely with what this deck's trying to do so that could be another yet another infinite tool in Karn's thing um, this deck is still absurdly powerful i mean your, your opponent can untap on turn three with like a lane of war elf and a uh, Wolf Willow Haven, and then by the end of the turn, they have 30 power in play, have cast three Storm the Festivals, and have fetched with Karn twice. Yes, that's actually happened to me. Um, but uh, this deck is a little bit slept on. It still has the same weaknesses. It's still weak to aggressive decks. Um, still kind of goes over the top of mid range decks like, is it Phoenix and, Mo and uh, Rakdos mid range? And kind of has a a dicey control matchup depending on how the control deck's built but uh mono green definitely kind of the mono green tron-esque deck of the pioneer format number four boros convoke um this is just kind of the ro rotating band of aggressive decks you'll see sometimes you'll see heroic in this slot sometimes you'll see mono white sometimes you'll see spirits sometimes you'll see uh, mono white humans a lot of it just depends on how the rest of the format is kind of shaking out. Uh, one of the decks that's make, made quite a move in the last couple of weeks is the Gruul decks. Um, but they don't, aren't quite enough results to, to get in the top five. But, you know, there is this kind of rotating other mid-range and aggressive decks in the format. Convoke just has the absurd ability to go 12 power, 14 power on turn two. Untap. And then play something like Immundane's Recruiter or... Um, uh, what is the name of the card? Uh, I play the card. You think I would know what it is? Um, Reckless Bushwhacker uh, to just give all your creatures haste and then threaten to just end the game on the spot. Uh, it does have some kind of awkward draws sometimes, as you could build creatures can be awkward if you don't have kind of a Gleeful Demolition Star or multiple uh, two drop or one drops into Venerated Luxodon or Knight Errant. That's dead. Still absurdly powerful deck that's capable of putting a very large board presence on the battlefield on turn two or turn three, and can definitely get you dead by turn four. So for that reason, it is number four on our list this month. Only a deck that's been continuously hanging out toward the top of the list, and that is Lotus Field Combo. Now this deck is, the engine has largely remained the same. The kill cons have changed over time. Now currently it's on the Chandra Hope's Beacon or Lair of the Hydra kills in the main deck. Basically, Chandra, you just tick it down, uh, kill your opponent, or dome your opponent for five, Balagred recovery it back, dome your opponent for five, uh, Balagred copy Balagred um, with Chandra's ability, pick up the other copy of Balagred and Chandra, and just continue this loop. Obviously, this mostly facilitated by uh, Omniscience getting into play in some different ways, either through ultimatums or your various tutor effects. Rest of the deck is all about getting Lotus Field to play, copying with Despian Stage. Uh, one of the nice things with this one is this continuity. Now this is kind of a split card. This is a I don't sacrifice my lands. This is more of a trick out of the Blue White X Azorius uh, controlled Lotus Field decks, but that you can keep yourself from sacrificing your two lands to the trigger, or you can just skip your opponent's turn during their upkeep. Um, either which way, it's a very powerful effect, and I'm honestly surprised that didn't quite come up before in these decks. Um, this is the one of the few pure combo decks in the Pioneer format. Um, you know, Mono Green is definitely a combo-ish deck, but is more you know, obviously creature and planeswalker based. This one is more traditional combo, cast a bunch of spells, kill your opponent eventually some arbitrary way. Uh, you could argue that Rakdos Sack could also be in this slot, so there are a few decks that compete for this. Uh, Grease Fang is another deck that can also compete for the top five. But currently, Lotus Field is the wrap-up of the top five list. As far as the Pioneer format, like I said, there isn't a ton of iterating going on in the format. Um, there were not a ton of impactful cards out of um, the new set. So, you know, unlike Modern, which got affected by Up the Beanstalk and Agatha's Soul Cauldron, uh, those engine cards really aren't able to be abused quite as much in the Pioneer format. So they really haven't had as much impact, although some people have certainly been brewing. Uh, one of the newer decks that has popped up a little bit is different iterating on the Rono combo deck. Uh, there was kind of this 80 card version that's been floating around a little bit that has combined 
bring the light along with Luca and Tybalt and Rona. So you have this kind of like hodgepodge of like five different combos going in your deck. And then it's just a matter of which which of the combos you draw and how you deal with your opponent. But um, as far as the top tables, there really isn't a whole lot of iterating going on in Pioneer right now. As I've said, a lot of the focus is on the modern format because of the RCQ season. But uh, Pioneer is still a fairly solid format if it is a little bit of modern's little brother right now. But uh, definitely we'll come back around when it's time for Pioneer RCQ season. For now, kind of a little bit of a holding pattern until either some new card shakes up the format or there's a little bit more focus back on the format. But don't forget, if you like Pioneer content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and hope to see you for our next video.